In this lesson, we're going to learn how to evaluate a power that has an exponent of zero, as well as evaluating a power that has a negative exponent. So in your notes, make sure you write this zero rule down. We have x raised to the zero equals one. So the rule is any number or expression with an exponent of zero equals one. Now, let's learn why this is. So let's take a look at the powers of two. Let's start with two to the first. In our previous lesson, we learned that two to the first is two. We learned two squared is two times two, which is four. Two to the third is the four times two, which is eight. Then we have another two being multiplied, so two to the fourth is 16. Two to the fifth is 32. And then two to the sixth is 64. So we're just simply multiplying two times two to get four, four times the base of two to get eight, times two to get 16, times two to get 32, and so forth. Now, let's work backward. Let's start with 64, and since we're working backward, we're gonna do the inverse of multiplication, and we're gonna divide. So when we have 64 divided by two, we get 32. 32 divided by two is 16. 16 divided by two gives us the eight. Eight divided by two gives us four. Four divided by two gives us two, two to the one, and then let's keep going with our pattern, two, divided by the base of two gives us one. So two raised to the zero power, if we were to quote unquote expand it, would simply be the base divided by itself, which always will produce a positive one. Now I will caution that sometimes we will have a negative two to the zero perhaps, and then we also have negative two raised to the zero. So in this first expression, it's negative two to the zero. And in this expression, it's negative two to the zero. So in this case, we will have the negative out front, and then we have the two over two if you expand it. So this is gonna give us a negative one. In this expression, when we expand, we are going to have a base of negative two over itself, and we get positive one. So when parentheses is used, we're gonna get a positive one, and when parentheses is not used, we're gonna get a negative one. Okay, so pause the video and you try these. So in number one, we simply have nine raised to the zero power, so that would look like nine over nine, which gives us one. Number two, we have negative, our base is nine, so nine divided by itself gives us negative one. In our third example problem, the base is negative nine. So negative nine divided by itself gives us the positive one. So remember, anytime an expression is raised to zero, it is one, but you have to be careful when a negative is attached out front. Now let's take a look at just a simple expression with the variables that spell math. So math is inside the parentheses. So math is all raised to the power of zero. So this would be like math divided by itself. So anything divided by itself is one. In problem five, the negative, the M, the A, the T, the H, all are included being raised to the power zero. So negative math is our base. And when it's raised to the power of zero, we divide it by itself, giving us positive one. Now in this example, 
notice there are no parentheses. So we have the variable M, A, T, and H. Notice that the H is the only factor that is raised to the power of zero. So M is really raised to the power of one, A is raised to the power of one, and T is raised to the power of one. So we're gonna have M, A, T, and then our H is H over H, which gives us one. So we have M, A, T times one, so we really, and we know one times M-A-T would just be M-A-T. So really the point in this problem is to remember that every factor has its own exponent. So this zero is only attached to H. In this example, we use parentheses to say that all of these factors are included being raised to the zero. So each one of these had a an exponent of zero because it was all included with a power of zero. Okay, now let's take a look at when we have a negative exponent. Now I'm not talking about a negative base here. I'm just talking about when our exponent is negative. So here is the negative exponent rule. So go ahead and write this in your notes. When you have a base raised to a negative exponent, the way we simplify that is we take that factor and its exponent, so x is our factor, negative m is our exponent, and we do not want any negative exponents. So we simply move them to the denominator, and then if there's nothing left, we can't leave it blank, so we put a one. So to simplify negative exponent, reciprocate the factor. So we had this being reciprocated, meaning move it to the opposite side of the fraction bar. And I know there's no fraction bar in our original problem, but remember you can write anything as a fraction by putting it over one. So I just flipped this to the denominator and then I took off the negative and made a positive. So these two expressions are equivalent, but let's see why this is. So again, we know two to the zero is one, two to the first is two, two squared is four, and two to the third is eight because we multiplied times two times two. Now let's work backward again and we're going to use the inverse of multiplication and we're gonna divide by our base of two. So eight divided by two is four, four divided by two is two. We learned, we just learned that two divided by two is one, meaning two to the zero is one. Now we have two to the negative one. That's what's coming before two to zero. So let's keep going with our pattern. So we have one, divided by two is one half. Next, we're gonna have two to the negative two and we're gonna keep going. So we have one half divided by two and that yields one fourth. So you can see that when we have negative exponents, our expressions, our values get smaller. Then we have one fourth divided by two and one fourth divided by two gives us one eighth. So when we have negative exponents, we are gonna have fractions as our answer. The other thing I want you to notice is take a look at two to the negative one and two. We have one half, we have two. Take a look at two to the negative two and two to the positive two. Two squared is four, two to the negative two is one fourth. So you can see that when we have powers that have a positive exponent and then it's negative exponent, our products are reciprocals of each other. So as we move left and we decrease, our product is getting smaller and smaller. So we know two to the fourth is gonna be 16. So two to the negative fourth is one over 16. We know two to the fifth is gonna be 32. So two to the negative fifth is one over 32. So well, negative exponents just means we have a small number. We have a fraction. So let's practice these. Five to the negative two. First, we're going to simplify and make a positive exponent. 
So we're going to say 1 over 5 to the positive 2. And if we want to simplify it, our final answer, 5 to the negative 2 is the same thing as 1 over 25. Our next example, this time the power with the negative exponent is in the denominator, so we're going to bring it to the front. And because it's just a 1 here, we don't need the 1, so we're going to have 2 to the positive 4. And we know 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. In this example, we're not going to evaluate because we have no values. We're simply going to remove all the negative exponents. But in order to remove the negative, you have to move that factor to its opposite location. So what I like to do is I just go through each factor. So b to the negative 1, so b to the negative 1. It's not a very happy camper, so we're going to move it to the opposite place and make it positive 1. Now we're going to go to the denominator, a squared. a squared, the 2 is positive. It's happy. It's going to stay where it is. So I'm going to say a squared. I'm going to keep the a squared in the denominator. c to the negative 3. This factor c is not very happy. He's negative. So we're going to move him to the numerator and remove the positive sign. So remember, all negative exponents need to be moved to the opposite location to make them happy. So we just moved the negative factors to the opposite location and then took off the negative. Pause the video and you try these. Okay, number one, we're first going to write it without the negative. So I moved the negative, the nine, I'm sorry, to the negative two. I moved it to the bottom. And then this is going to give us 1 over 81, 9 times 9. Number 2, we're going to flip the 3 to the negative 3 from the denominator to the numerator. We're going to make that negative 3 a positive. And so that's 3 times 3 times 3. That gives us positive 27. Now notice 9 is a positive base. 1 third is a positive base. In this example, 2 over 4 is a positive base. So our bases are are positive and our final answer should be positive. We're just looking at negative exponents. Okay, number three, I want to flip the two to the negative three to the bottom, making a positive exponent, and four to the negative one, I want to flip to the top. So I have four, and then I have two times two times two. So this gives us four over eight, which simplifies to one half. On four, we just have variables and no values, so we're just going to move factors to make them happy. G squared, he's happy, he's staying there. K to the negative one, he's negative, he wants to move down to the basement. H to the negative four is in the basement and he wants to come upstairs, so we're gonna make him positive. Number five, Y squared is happy. Leave him where he is. W to the negative three. He's in the basement, he's not happy, he wants to come upstairs. And then X to the force is in the basement and prefers to stay there. Number six, we have R, R is happy. P to the negative two in the basement wants to come upstairs. Q to the negative three also wants to come upstairs. And then we have the one down there, but we don't need a one in the denominator. So remember, you always want to simplify as much as you can. So this is the preferred answer. I hope this helps.